Hi, Nico here. So for this video, I'll show you how I made this Bradbury Cafe Snap Cocktail Dress that came from the scrap fabrics and the skirt that I mistakenly got from its waist like it was supposed to be for my client. So I had this fabric lying around, so I decided to have it repurposed. So for this part, I will show you how I draped it and made its unlike features or its foundation. So stay tuned. So this is a scrap fabric that I had lying around. I used it for a previous client. And this is a skirt that I messed up with at the waist. So I kind of played with it a bit. And this is the design that I came up with. The bodice has a pleated, asymmetrical pleated design and a false head that kind of looks like a bow. And after that, I padded my dress from according to standard mannequin size. So this is the foundation. It has a asymmetrical waistline. And this is the drape part of it. So after that, I transferred the toile on the pa on the paper. Then I laid it out neatly. So here I am basting the front bodice. Now since the front bodice has this princess seam design, so since it's kind of curvy, uh, pinning alone or sewing it with pins on the machine is not as secure so I'm doing this to secure it carefully and basting a garment really helps because you kind of have an idea how it will roughly look like once it's done and it's also a good way to avoid making mistakes along the sewing process so this is really helpful though it takes time it is really helpful especially if you're going to make really good clothes After basting, I'm now about to sew it by the machine. So, when sewing this by the machine, just gently stretch the material as you pass it along the needle so that you'll be able to get even and hot seams after. And of course, as always, after sewing, we have to press open the seams of the garment. So with the help of a dress form, I was able to press easily on the curvy seams of the bodice. This was really helpful because uh, for those people who, or for those people who don't have tailors have to shape the bust area, the dress form is very much practical. Now here I am sewing the wide straps of the dress. Now I cut these straps on the bias so that it will gently wrap around the shoulders of the wearer. Now these dress are actually removable. Okay, now I'm pressing the seams open. Now for this one, you really have to be careful when pressing bias parts of the fabric because sometimes if we press really hard we tend to misshape those bias cut pieces of a garment so I'm pressing the wrong side now I'm about to turn it on the right side and do the same process again After pressing, I drape the straps around the foundation on the dress board so that it will take the shape and I leave this overnight. Okay, and by doing this, I'll be able to maximize the stretch of the bias straps because 
uh, actually these straps tend to stretch if they're not you know stretch at a maximum length so ideally sometimes uh, seamstresses do this or leave this to stretch for a week but you know I just do this overnight so I'm stretching the straps at the up to the side seam so that it would, wouldn't have that usual strap design and after that I am thread tracing the pleats on the draped front bodice so as you can see I'm intersecting the thread tracing so that it will have this really pointed corners and as you notice I'm really not doing any end knots on the base things because eventually I will pull this after aligning them and here you can see I'm actually adding notches so these are the waist notches on the drape bodice so this has to meet at when I'm about to pleat them. So these are the waist notches. And after that, I will do the notches for the straps, or the markings for the straps, and the center line. So this is the center line. It is really important when you do this because uh, when you drape this or when you paint this on the dress board or shape it on the dress board, you'll have to align this first. Then after that, you'll you will do or you will align the side seams and align the pleats. And here I am. I'm about to drape this on the dress board. Since this cut on the bias, it really gives that wonderful graceful folds on the foundation so when you're doing this when you're draping this on the foundation just smooth out the creases do not pull because it will stretch the fabric so gently I'm smoothing all the creases not pulling as much as possible so you see I'm up to the side seam and the center line and the waist line and now I'm meeting or aligning the pleats and gently folding in. Folding in. Make sure that the base things meet. And after that, I will securely touch them by hand.
what the bot just looks like after it's spin. Now I'm about to pin those beats, or rather, stitch those beats by hand. When doing this, you're, you just have to do some tacking stitches, really tiny ta tacking stitches on the pleats so that it will stay securely. Now when you're about to end these stitches, just do some back stitches at the very last stitch of the pleats so that it will stay securely. You can overlap the, the tacking stitches if your thread accidentally knots itself. So that's perfectly normal. You just have to be really careful when doing this process. When you're at the end of a stitch, just go three stitches back and knot it at the end. That's the end of part one. Thank you for watching. So please don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Until then, see you until the next video.